Hello, welcome back to American Civil War and UK History. And I've come a little bit further up the road to another little marker and loving little monument. And this, this one is to, at the time, Cavalry Commander, Colonel of Cavalry, Oliver Cromwell. So this is before he becomes the almighty, powerful uh, Lord Protector of England, the Commonwealth and all that. And the 10 years of misery for everybody. Um, don't let him know I said that but um, yeah so this is where he will set off with his cavalry and let's not beat around the bush ladies and gentlemen the Ironsides as they were known were the most formidable cavalry in the country at the time not many would defeat Oliver Cromwell's Ironsides on the battlefield he actually revolutionizes a lot a lot Sorry, he actually changes the way cavalry is used during this period. So what you will find in the Battle of Naseby is Prince Rupert, when he takes his cavalry forward, he will charge the enemy and try and chase them off the battlefield. And once he's done that, he leaves the battlefield and then he will go and pillage the baggage train. Now that happens here at Naseby and that actually costs the Royalists the battle in the end. Cromwell does it differently. Oliver Cromwell is so good, he trains his men to reform. And this has not been seen before. So they reform and then they attack again. And they're relentless. And that is why they end up with the name the Ironsides. And if you've ever seen um, parliamentarian cavalry, you will notice they always have a lobster pot type style uh, helmet. And uh, yeah, so that's where the one of the name nicknames comes from the round heads but anyway this is Oliver Cromwell's monument it's an older monument than you've uh, than, than, uh, that's been around uh, what you find with English Civil War battlefields is or English uh, English battlefields is there is all normally some kind of marker but also what has happened is is the um, Naseby 1645 um, have put their own site has put signs up here to explain things a little bit better because I think before this there wasn't any signs up here and this is a fantastic fantastic picture this this actual picture is uh, amazing it's, it's full detail of the actual uh, the layout of the battle just amazing and again there's our location where we were earlier uh, if you remember when we was up at the hedge earlier there was a, a smaller picture of this this is the bigger one it's just amazing you've got all the little guys standing there behind the hedge with their horses and everything shooting into the royalist flank can I just say Naseby 1645 you did an amazing job on these signs and the Battlefield Trust and Royal Armouries and everyone else involved in uh, getting these signs made up and put out here for people to enjoy and read a little bit of the history. So let's have a look at this monument. So again, this is a, um, I believe this uh, picture I actually used um, on my Mike Ingram uh, Naseby video. So this area here is where the um, parliamentarians set up their, um, set up their cavalry. So let's go back to the map and I can show you where Cromwell was formed up. So um, I believe Cromwell is over this side of the battlefield. Now as far as um, location is concerned, from what I understand, and I might, put, I might get this wrong, so I apologise if I do, Let's just have a look at this. Okay, so we are here. So we're 
facing down onto the battlefield from here. So the hedges are in that direction over there and you're up on the high ridge here and looking down and down in that slope there is where the real hard fighting will take place. And right there in the middle will be Skippen's infantry doing the hardest fighting, the pikemen. So yeah, we are looking out at the Naseby battlefield right now. So you're up on a on the uh, parliamentarian side, looking down over, down into the Royalist. Gina, I don't own a metal detector, but I'm sure if I did, firstly, I'd probably get shot because uh, a lot of the land's private. And uh, yeah, uh, you can't walk some of it, unfortunately, I'm afraid. But it is an amazing place. I mean, look, people don't realise this stuff is out here. You know, that's that's the point of this. And you know, I might get sometimes I get some of the history wrong, and people at home, I apologise. But I'm just trying to highlight what's here, you know, because people forget about these places. People drive past this place every day, and I bet they don't even know it's here. You know, I mean, the road's literally there. So again, I'm not too sure about the design of it. But again, it is called Cromwell's Monument. And I mean, the writing's a little bit faded. Um, and also, ladies and gentlemen, i just a little gripe with Facebook. One of the reasons why I've gone live on my own page is because when you go live on your page, for some reason nobody watches it and it doesn't reach anyone and it's so frustrating. So the only way for me to reach people is to go on my personal page. Uh, that is the way Facebook works, I'm afraid, and there's not a lot I can do about it. It's very, very frustrating. Anyway, I'm gonna turn you back around so you don't have to keep looking at me, so we can look at this amazing, amazing battlefield. So again, Parliamentarian Cavalry, Oliver Cromwell's Cavalry, form up here and charge down this ridge into the Royalist lines, which are over there on the other ridge. And over there somewhere is the hedge where I was earlier. So Oliver Cromwell is on the Parliamentarian's right flank. Prince Rupert, on the other hand, who is charging the opposite way into the parliamentarian lines, is on the opposite end of the field and is on the left side, the parliament's left. And again, what will happen is, is Prince Rupert will, will, so Prince Rupert's tactics are shock and awe, hit the enemy hard and then ride off. In actual fact, he actually tries to ride round the back, but gets stuck somehow and then he decides to abandon that plan completely and go for the baggage train and the, the thing is with the baggage train this actually costs the um prince rupert is the commanding officer on this field um and if you lose your commanding officer your arm is basically knackered i want a word and that's that that i mean yeah okay you've got other people on the field you've got cromwell and skippen on the field as well doing their job um which actually helps you know but at the same time you've just lost your commanding officer what what was he thinking we'll never know why would you leave the battlefield when you are the commanding officer but there you go and again like i've said in previous videos this is the last time king charles the first will ever be on the battlefield during the english civil wars the british civil wars because he will be handed over by the scots hundred thousand pounds millions of pounds in today's money to parliament 
parliament eventually will get fed up with the king's games and he does play games he tries to play everyone against each other it's a really really interesting there's an amazing book out there written by um uh, uh diana's brother uh what's his name um i can't remember his name charles spencer sorry he wrote an amazing book called the Ki killers of the king i believe it's called and it is absolutely brilliant so if you need a if you want a book on that subject then go and go and read it or listen to it on audible like i did because it's actually really really good it's a long it's a very very long book but it goes it it delves a little bit into the english civil war and then what it does is it sort of then uh, carries on after up to leading up to charles's execution in 1649 and then carries on after about how the regicides are all rounded up in uh 1660 when um uh charles ii comes back on the throne anyway guys i'm going to leave it there and I'll finish with a beautiful view of the northamptonshire countryside And, and yes Gina so um, I drove up um, I'm actually quite lucky because uh, what happened was is uh, my beautiful wife and my daughters have gone to a, uh, a little special event up here because uh, they have family that my wife has her family living up here and, uh, and why, I, why they are doing their special little event whatever they're doing I decided to come out to the Naseby battlefield because this is my first time and I'm kicking myself that I've never done this before but believe me this will not be the last time it is just so beautiful out here it's unreal and again people don't realize what is here you know and yet again as much as I keep going on about it this battle is so important in shaping the history of the Britain as it stands today this battle ends the first English Civil War it doesn't end the the, the 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 war it actually finishes in 1646 but it is the defining battle of that period you won't see a battle of this size again until later on and probably actually not again i don't know i mean it's not a huge battle like i said compared to american civil war battles it's tiny it's like a skirmish but and again i'll, I'll tell you the numbers because they're on here or i can show you so you have about ten thousand royalists and about thirteen and a half thousand um parliamentarians take part in this battle anyway keep following keep watching see you all soon